Welcome everyone uh, to El Paso Community College Culinary Arts and Related Services Chef's Share Session. Uh, my name is Chef Lugo, Certified Executive Pastry Chef, Certified Executive Chef. Today we're going to be talking about Bavarian cream. We're going to be working on a Bavarian cream. Now Bavarian cream um, is really the workhorse of our pastry kitchen. So in a professional pastry kitchen, um, we have a lot of workhorses. Uh, whipped cream or um, Chantilly cream, uh, which is a derivative. Uh, we can also uh, say that our pastry cream or creme patisserie is also one of the workhorses. But um, in this case, just like a mousse, um, a Bavarian cream um, has a lot of versatility. The versatility really is only um, dependent on your imagination and how you work these products. So the first thing that a Bavarian cream is made out of is um, a creme anglaise. Now a creme anglaise is a vanilla sauce. Now a vanilla sauce is a stirred custard. Um, the stirred custard um, has four very simple ingredients. We have some milk um, or half and half depending on, on your liking, egg yolks, um, some sugar, and some vanilla. Now I'm going to be making the vanilla sauce um, as um, in, a, in a few steps. Um, the main idea with the vanilla sauce is that we follow the, the process in order to obtain a very velvety and smooth product. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up the cream, sorry, the milk. Um, now the milk itself, um, and I mentioned cream, um, you can add half and half or add some cream to this. Um, the richness comes from the custard itself or the coagulation of the yolks. Um, so um, in this matter, the, the cream will add more, um, I guess a, a heavier, uh, consistency but you need to be careful because it will break too much fat will add more of a plasticity or a plastic flavor to your to your product in this case um, so we're gonna heat this up and we're just gonna bring it to scald point I'm gonna add some sugar now when we're working with a vanilla sauce uh, it's very important to understand the ratios uh, ratios I'm gonna be looking at three things the ratios the ingredients in uh, the form of uh, uh, grams um, also um, in the form of percentages. So this is a very simple recipe, 100% milk, 25% sugar, and 25% egg yolk. So if you can remember that, you'll be golden. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of the sugar here, and the rest of the sugar I'm gonna put into this bowl. Why did I add a little bit of sugar in here? The reason for that is because sugar, when you put it in the bottom of any milk product, will help with the scorching. So it kind of inhibits it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is keep that, bring it to scald point, and I'm gonna take my eggs, and um, egg yolks, and I'm gonna mix it with my sugar. Now, I'm gonna start to whisk this up as quickly as possible. The reason for that is because anytime you mix sugar, or salt for that matter, in the culinary world, um, it has uh, what we call hygroscopic properties. Uh, so what that's doing is pulling out moisture. So what happens to egg yolks when it pulls out the moisture? You're gonna get lumps. Um, so you wanna make sure you mix this really quickly to inhibit some of that lump formation and drying out of your yolks. So I'm gonna just whisk this up. It doesn't have to be fluffy. Um, you will read some recipes that'll tell you to whip it up until it's uh, completely into a, a froth. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we're still trying to accomplish the same thing. Um, in this case, this is perfect. So. Um, as this milk is coming to a scald point, and scalding is just basically when you start to see a little bit of the steam you know, billowing out of the pot itself. Um, now, it's important to note that this, this recipe that we're looking at is a very standard vanilla sauce, and I said it's the workhorse of the pastry kitchen. What happens is um, there's so much versatility with this sauce that um, once, it's, once it's done, once it's made, yes, we can turn it into a Bavarian cream, but we can also turn it into an ice cream uh, just by turning it into our, into our uh, ice cream machine. But also, this point that we're heating it up, we're adding flavor. So we can add flavor at this point. Say you wanted to make a chocolate Bavarian cream. You could add either cocoa powder or, or chocolate and melt it in here, if you, and then follow the same process that I'm gonna be going through. Um, if you wanted to make a, um, say a chai tea or an Earl Grey um, Bavarian cream, um, I love to use teas uh, <coughs> into items like this or herbs. So if I wanted to make like a rosemary uh, Bavarian cream, this would be a perfect um, time to add it in here. So anytime you have heat, you have an opportunity to infuse flavor. Uh, so, 
always keep that in mind. In this case, we're gonna just do a plain Bavarian cream. So as you can see, some steam is coming up, so it's ready to go. I'm gonna do what's called temper. So I'm gonna temper my hot liquid into my cold liquid. Tempering is exactly what it sounds like. You're tempering the, the temperature from one to the other to prevent coagulation. So I'm gonna pour this in slowly. Make sure you get all the yolk from around the edges. So you're gonna pour approximately half the product. Once you're ready, you're gonna re-administer the, the, the egg portion into the milk, slowly drizzling. Again, preventing that coagulation. At this point, I'm done with my whisk. Notice that I'm using a stainless steel pot. I'm gonna lower the temperature just a little bit and I'm gonna switch over to my wooden spoon. Um, when you're using any type of, of metal product that is reactive, like aluminum or copper, uh, you need to be careful. So stainless steel is probably the best um, vehicle uh, to, to make any type of cream sauces. Um, so vanilla sauce um, is definitely one of those sauces that you would like to use stainless steel for. Um, so I'm gonna just slowly cook this down and I'm gonna keep it stirring constantly until I get uh, to a point where the eggs are coagulating and then they get thick. So remember, this is a custard. So the custard itself is always going to be thickened or made into more of viscous uh, because of the coagulation of the proteins. So in this uh, vanilla sauce, I'm looking at it, visually inspecting it uh, to kind of gauge uh, where I'm at. And when we're looking for, what we're looking for is something called nappe. Um, and that means just to coat the back of a spoon. So in this case, you can also take the temperature. The temperature that you're looking for is anywhere between 175 to 180 degrees. And that should give you a very nice product. You want to be careful that you don't overcook it because it will, will um, coagulate on the bottom or on the sides and it'll break. Similar to like scrambled eggs. Um, and that's not what we want. Um, so that would give us an inferior product. As you can see, there is some steam coming out um, and I can smell the the sugar and the cream and the lactic uh, notes on there. Um, I can't smell the vanilla yet um, because we're not using vanilla beans uh, for this one. We are using a vanilla bean paste though. So um, if you are using a vanilla bean, um, you would have added it in the beginning of the process. Um, just take your bean, cut it in half, scrape out the seeds, throw it in, and you'll get a beautiful product. In this case, we're gonna wait till the very end, especially if you're using something like um, your vanilla extract that is alcohol based. A lot of times when you're cooking the alcohol based products will evaporate obviously and um, your vanilla won't give you that um, you know very clean vanilla flavor that we're looking for. So as I'm testing this you'll see that my product is getting a little more viscous. I'm going to check the temperature really quick. Right now I'm at 177. I'm getting extremely close. So if you can see, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. The residual heat is going to continue to cook. You need to understand that when you stop cooking something, it does not mean that the heat transfer is not continuing to happen. So we do have carryover heat. So what I want to do is once I get it to the point that I'm satisfied with the consistency, then I'm gonna stop the cooking by shocking it in a little bit of ice water. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna stop the cooking, but for this product, I don't wanna cool it completely. I wanna just keep it kinda of warm, but I, I don't want to continue to cook it. So I'm going to shock it for about 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna bring it back up out of my ice bath, and my vanilla sauce is ready. Now, the vanilla sauce, when we're using it, or we're gonna use it, um, we always strain it through a fine sieve. The vanilla that I'm using here is going to be, uh, like I said, a little vanilla bean. So I'm gonna take this and I'll add it now. I'm 
Now the vanilla bean you're gonna see because it's got little specks um, in it. Um, the sieve will catch some of those, uh, but the flavor profile, the flavor's already in there. Um, if you'd like to add the vanilla um, paste afterwards, after the strain process, that's perfectly fine as well. This to me looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. Tap your chinois. This is a chinois. You wanna tap it from the top gently. So anytime you use this piece of equipment, it's a very specialized piece of equipment. Um, it is not meant to be pressed down. Anything that goes through the, the fine mesh is supposed to go through. Anything that doesn't is not supposed to go through. So we use these for fine sauces. And in this case, this is a very fine sauce. So my vanilla sauce is ready. Um, the next step is we're gonna bloom our gelatin. Um, our gelatin, um, in this case, we're using gelatin um, in its powdered form. Now powdered gelatin or gelatin comes in several ways. It comes in sheets or leaves. Um, it also comes in uh, little granules and then also powdered. Um, so this gelatin happens to be granulated gelatin um, and we're gonna hydrate this or bloom um, or add water. Uh, we're gonna bloom it uh, before we use it. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna hydrate the gelatin, ab absorb the liquid, um, and it's gonna help melt it uh, in order to incorporate it into our product. So, how do we bloom gelatin? Um, very simple. Um, the gelatin is in granular form. All I'm gonna do is add my water. This is four times the amount of water. So if I have one ounce here, this is four ounces of water. Remember that ratio, four to one. Simply pour it all in at once and quickly stir just until everything is dissolved or incorporate it. Now we're gonna leave this like this for about three minutes um, in order for the gelatin to congeal or become one solid mass. Once that happens, we're gonna go to our next step. So our gelatin has already bloomed. Now, how do I know it's bloomed? Uh, a bloomed gelatin is gonna always have a, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, more of a congealed uh, mass, like gelatin, like jello gelatin from home. So this has already been bloomed, so this takes about three minutes, um, and I can literally uh, pull this out in one solid block. Um, this product um, is basically telling me it's already absorbed all the water that it can at this point. Uh, so what, what we need to do is melt it. Now, is it always necessary to melt it? Um, no. Um, if you're working with something that uh, ha doesn't have a lot of fat, um, like cream or like our vanilla sauce or any dairy base, um, it, it's a be the best idea is to melt it because gelatin does not um, uh, blend itself as easily as it does in a water-based product. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna quickly throw this in the microwave um, and then I'm gonna add it to my vanilla sauce. It's important to understand that the vanilla sauce itself needs to also be warm. Uh, just think of Jello. Jello melts, um, you know, in the in, in in your car or you know at home. Um, it needs to do the same thing in order to mix. So in order to get the same strength that we need, we need to make sure that it's melted. So I'm going to throw it into the microwave for just a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to start measuring out our ratios. Now, um, here at EPCC. Um, I've devised a, a handout that we call a Bavarian in a nutshell. Now, this ratio that I'm gonna give you is the maximum amount of ratio of gelatin to creme anglaise or our, what we call our flavor base, this happens to be vanilla, um, the maximum amount of gelatin you want in there in order to give you a sliceable product and a product that'll hold, um, say if you're using it in a tort or you're using it to unmold and in a, in, a, in a plated dessert that needs to sit for about 25 minutes uh, without collapsing. Now, does that mean that you won't find, you'll find, won't find recipes with a different ratio? Absolutely. This is the maximum amount of point that you can get a good gelatinous product that is fluffy 
uh, and creamy and it'll melt in your mouth as opposed to something that is bouncy and gelatinous. So you need to make sure that you don't add too much gelatin um, because that will ruin your product. So that's one of the uh, important points. In this Bavarian in a nutshell, I've devised it so we can look at it by volume. So I have here a quart of cream and I, I'm gonna use my vanilla sauce by volume and I'm gonna measure out another quart. So although this recipe gives me a little bit more than a quart, I'm gonna only use one quart uh, for this demonstration. So now what I have is one quart of vanilla sauce, one quart of heavy cream. To that, I'm going to add our gelatin that is still melting. Um, so the temperature of your vanilla sauce should be anywhere between 120 to 150 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in here just to ease in mixing. Um, and then we're gonna cool it down just a little bit. So the most important thing to remember is that the gelatin never stops setting. <laughs> so you need to work with the clock um, and not let the clock work, work against you. So as soon as we mix the gelatin into our base, um, this flavor base that we call vanilla base is now gonna turn into a more purposeful product called a, Bav a Bavarian base. So whenever you hear the term Bavarian base here at EPCC, we're referring to a, a flavored creme anglaise that's its, its final product is devised or designed to be a Bavarian cream. So at this point, I'm gonna take my uh, gelatin, I'm gonna pour my melted gelatin into my warm vanilla sauce, and I'm gonna stir. Now I wanna make sure that this product stays warm, and I wanna make sure that it's all melted through. What happens if it's not warm? What happens if it's not melted through? A couple of things can go wrong. One, you'll have streaks of gelatinous ribbons in your product um, and in your gelatin. Uh, two, your gelatin is not gonna set or your Bavarian is not gonna set to the desired texture. Why? Because the gelatin just never got absorbed. So this is a very crucial step um, in order to make sure that your Bavarian uh, comes out the way you want. Now the texture of a Bavarian um, although it's, it's very fluffy and airy, um, it should still hold and be sliceable. Um, Bavarians are, are designed to be molded, um, but um, because they're so versatile, again, the pastry chef of today will think of many ways of using it in many different forms, controlling and monitoring um, the setting of the gelatin itself. So this is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it back into my container. Oops. Got a little heavy on there. I think I'll use the other container. Okay. Now we have both of our products. What I've just done is I've created a vanilla Bavarian base and I'm going to cool it down. How cool do I want to get it? I want to get it as cool to the touch, probably somewhere around 100 degrees, maybe uh, 98, so about body temperature. One of the easiest ways to do that is to um, expand the surface area, put it in a cold bowl, and then just stir. <clears throat> this is gonna minimize the setting of the gelatin around the edges. Now you could throw it into a ice bath um, just ensure that you have plenty of water in the ice bath. If I put it in the ice bath and I leave it in there too long, it's going to set on the bottom. So what you wanna do is quickly stir, remove, and then continue in short increments. Now this Bavarian base, you can see it's very viscous. It has a nice texture. The vanilla is coming through um, so we have a very nice product working here. Now I'm gonna continue to cool this because you don't wanna add it in when it's too 
uh, warm. The reason for that is the next step, we're gonna be adding the uh, whipped heavy cream. When we add the whipped heavy cream, um, remember it's a whipped product, so we aerated it. As it's aerated, it's going to become more and more, um, uh, I guess the volume is going to double in size. So we're counting on that volume. We're counting on that volume to be incorporated into our vanilla sauce. If that vanilla sauce um, recipe that you're working with for the Bavarian um, calls for one quart of cream, like in this recipe, um, if we add it in when it's warm, the cream is going to deflate um, and therefore creating a Bavarian that's not as fluffy as you want it to be. It's gonna be more dense. Um, and also, you won't get the same volume. So speaking of, of uh, being consistent, and our consistency ratio goes down. So we always want to take that into account. So um, one thing that I always tell my students is, you know, success is creating or is doing very simple tasks extraordinarily well. So if you can do these simple tasks really well, everything else really takes care of itself. So I'm almost there. I'm gonna do one more dip, stir a couple of times, and we're pretty much there. Now, depending on what your uh, final use is for the Bavarian cream, um, if you're gonna pipe it, or you're gonna put it in a piping bag and pipe it, then I would let this cool just a little bit more. If you're going to mold it in a very delicate and, um, how should I put it, intricate mold, like the one I'm gonna use today, um, you'd want it a little thin, um, just so it gives you enough time to go into the crevices, uh, but nevertheless, you still want that uh, cream um, to be fluffy um, and not too wet. So, for our next step, again, temperature is correct. Um, I'm gonna take my cream that's already been whipped, and I'm gonna check the consistency of the whipped cream. This should be at a soft peak, maybe even a little less than a soft peak uh, for that, because we want that whipped cream to kind of be kind of mousse-like in itself, um, because we want a delicate product. So I'm gonna take my cream, and I'm gonna fold it into my Bavarian. Now we always fold in the cream in three additions. The three additions are in order to uh, keep the volume that we're looking for. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fold it by cutting the center and folding out. Notice how it's still kind of in a marbled state. Um, we want that. We don't wanna completely incorporate it on the first turn. So we're gonna add the next addition and then we'll continue to fold, center out. Same principle, we do not want to fold everything in. You still want it to look kind of like a ribbon. On the last edition, we want to completely fold everything else. So in this case, I'm going to add the rest of the cream. And then incorporate completely. So if you notice, the cream is getting thicker, thicker, and thicker. And again, that's because of the gelatin it's beginning to coagulate or set. Um, the gelatin, because the cream was so cold, obviously is gonna affect it as it's getting cooler and cooler and cooler. So this is where you need to work with the clock and not let the clock uh, get away from you. Um, in this process, once you're ready to go, um, depending on what you're doing um, with this, um, this is gonna set just like jello. So think of it like a fluffy milk jello, if you will. Um, you can add fresh fruit at this point. Um, you can mold it into a cup and also uh, serve it um, like a parfait. Um, we can also make an, a tort by making thin layers of different uh, flavors of Bavarian cream. Um, remember, we're gonna get like a moussey product, but it's sliceable. Um, so it's very good for molding, unmolding, freezing, and strategizing that way. So the most important thing you need to remember is understand 
how the product is made. The fundamentals on how we make this work, therefore, from there, you take it to what can I do with it. Once you understand how the principles work and the parameters and the limitations, then you understand um, how your imagination can take you to a different level. So with this, we're gonna take this product, and if you notice, it's nice and velvety. I'm gonna use it in a couple of molds. Um, I'm gonna mold, um, this is a silicone mold. Um, you can buy them online, on Amazon. Um, I got these um, on Amazon. Um, it depends on what you're using with it. There's lots of versatile molds around, out there, uh, different, uh, different uh, sizes, colors, shapes, anything. So um, they're, do they're doing a really good job on molds these days. Um, so don't be afraid to go out there, buy yourself a mold, and then see how we can work with it. Uh, so for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and pour uh, my Bavarian cream into a piping bag. And I'm gonna use two molds, or I'm gonna demo two molds for you. So I have here a more, or a larger production mold, and then I have um, some small ramekin molds, or um, cake ring molds, and then I have my silicone mold. Um, this Bavarian itself right now at this point, is, has a very nice structure um, and it contains a good amount of flavor in it. Remember, the flavor is only vanilla, but the vanilla is gonna give us a nice base for everything else, uh, whether you're using it in a plated dessert or if you're gonna add it into a cake. Now, when we're molding any type of Bavarian, remember I, I said we need to uh, ensure that it has good coverage. What I mean by that is if you're making a mold the setting ability has to, um, you have to make sure that it doesn't have any balloons or bubbles or air pockets. So if you're filling something like this, um, I would recommend that you go straight to the bottom and just fill straight up and then release. Uh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow e uh, nice coverage, shake it just a little bit, and then you can add your flavor profiles. For something that's cylindrical, um, same principle, you're gonna go to the bottom and fill the cavity in one fall step. Shake, I've added a little plastic underneath here just to um, prevent any oozing from coming out. On these types of molds, it's a good idea to brush them or when you're piping, to make sure that you go straight down and work your way into the crevices. I'm only gonna do one here, but when you work yourself into the crevices, it ensures that you have a product that's gonna go into each and every one of those lines. And that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, regardless on what you're doing, um, at this point, it is really up to you how you go to the next step. This Bavarian is already made. We made it through to the parameters that we here at EPCC expect, and we made it so it'll hold and be sliceable once it's unmolded. So once it's already in the molds and they're placed in the fridge, any of the, of the molds that we use, especially if they're more intricate, you may have to freeze them. Now the freezing process is gonna make them completely solid, um, like you can see here that I've already pulled one out. Uh, so we wanna unmold these as quickly as possible. So after you've already placed your Bavarian in your mold, it just depends on what you're gonna do with it at the end. Now, remember how I mentioned that it's really your imagination that's, and your creativity that's gonna drive what you can do with it afterwards. So in this case, we did something as simple as putting it into a cylindrical mold. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, plastic from the bottom and then I'm going to remove it from the mold itself. Um, this other one, we placed in some acetate sheets, um, rolled it up, and now we have a cylinder that's a lot smaller and thinner. Um, the versatility with this is that we can bend it, so it's bendable, um, or we can cut it into different sizes depending on how we're gonna be plating it up. So we're gonna go ahead and plate this up just in a second while we remove the mold from our cylinder. Um, now, because it is a metal cylinder, 
Um, we're gonna torch it and then we're gonna pull it out. So um, in this case, we're just gonna just simply torch the outside. Be careful not to burn your your, uh, <laughs> your your plastic tray in this case. Um, and then what can we do with it? So let's see what we can uh, work with. So here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a simple black plate. Um, I'm gonna use my Bavarian or sometimes we refer to as flexible Bavarian. I'm gonna give it a little flex. And then we're gonna use um, a couple of things that uh, we have on hand. Um, I have the components to a successful plated dessert um, through ACF standard and EPCC standard. What we want is, you know, few components. We want a fruit component, we want a main item, we also want a, a chocolate component as well as a sauce. Now, um, as we're working through it, um, although I already have my Bavarian in this shape, what are we gonna do to kind of make it pop? Um, so here I have a little bit of brownie. I'm gonna just kind of attach this. little lemon curd. A little more fruit. Beautiful raspberry. I like to make the fruit kind of do its own thing, um, not creating any, any points of complete um, placement. Um, try to let them have a little bit of life like I always like to mention to the students. Um, so put a little fruit there. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of our chocolate tiles. We'll kind of adhere those throughout. I think I'm going to kind of place that one on this side. Another chocolate tile here. And we're gonna do another one here. Little fennel frond. Again, giving it some life. And then some of our beautiful mint that we grow here in the garden. Uh, mint always gives it a nice refreshing flavor. And I'm going to just pinch the bottom with our tweezers and then pull up. And that gives you kind of individual little pieces of mint as opposed to large chunks. There we go. And then finally, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of our, I'm gonna use my fingers here, dust, powder there, a little powder there. And this is just our cake dust. And really simply, we can create a very simple plated dessert um, that will give your customers a little more of a wow as in how they put that together. Now, whether you're doing something as simple as this, or if you decide to use your blueberry portion, here, I'm gonna actually place that there, take my sauce, and I'm using the same sauces that we're looking for. I'll decorate with the exact same ingredients, giving it some continuity. This cake crumble, again, works really nice with our cake. And 
not forgetting our chocolate component, our fennel fronds. Fennel, by the way, gives it a really, not only does it look nice, it gives it a nice licorice flavor to that. And then as well as our with a little more of our lemon and quite simply you ended up with another plate of dessert same items you have your Bavarian here regardless on what you're doing whether it's going to be something to a more modern take or more traditional um, every time that you use a Bavarian cream it's going to give you that versatility and what we're looking for is all of the steps that are required to make the completed uh, vanilla sauce, utilize the uh, proper techniques, whipping the cream and folding it in, and then simply molding it, unmolding it, and then using your creativity uh, to produce a beautiful product on the plate for your customer. Thank you very much. My name, once again, is Chef Lugo, and this is Chef Share Session Bavarian Cream.